Hi, everyone. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Wednesday. Uh, we have a, a, lo a large, severe weather outbreak to deal with today, and we're taking a look at here on the radar uh, from this morning at 9 a.m. And there are two distinct areas that I want to focus on. The first one that is moving across Pennsylvania in, at the moment into northern West Virginia. Uh, there are a few embedded thunderstorms in here, but uh, there doesn't appear to be anything severe. Uh, there are heavy downpours, and this is coming through uh, to the through New Jersey and the Hudson Valley, Long Island, Connecticut area, and eastern Pennsylvania, of course, uh, during the next couple of hours. Then we have uh, the, what is a snaking line of of uh, severe thunderstorms, potentially severe thunderstorms uh, this morning uh, across uh, southern Ohio, and then cutting across Kentucky on a diagonal down into um, cent west central Tennessee, uh, west of Nashville. And we also have some snow going on up in the northern Great Lakes. This is as low pressure uh, heads its way uh, northeastward. And when we look at the um, surface uh, temperatures and, and how all of this is all structured out, the uh, low uh, sitting up in central Michigan and temperatures in the 20s and 30s behind the front, you can see temperatures in the 50s and 60s and even some 70s starting to show up ahead of it. Uh, there'll be an expanding area of uh, 70s before this day is done. Now, the uh, map has the warm front drawn all the way up into upstate New York, but I think there's uh, there's more of a bit of a secondary, let's call it a secondary warm front that's just about through central New Jersey uh, because it's really in here that we have the uh, really warm tropical air. And here's your you know severe weather outline on the radar uh, with uh, regards to what's going on across uh, the uh, Ohio Valley and now getting ready to move into parts of West Virginia and eastern Kentucky. All of this is translating, low is moving northeastward, so all of this is going to be translating east. So let me show you what the Storm Prediction Center has done with all this uh, with regards to the severe weather risk. They just upgraded it. They added an area of moderate risk across southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee, and they have the enhanced area now has been expanded to include southern New Jersey and all of southeastern Pennsylvania. So we have uh, the uh, the um, Storm Prediction Center uh, being a little more aggressive uh, this, mo this morning in terms of what it's seeing. Slight risk that goes up uh, into uh, the uh, middle Hudson Valley uh, across southernmost New York, all of Pennsylvania, the rest of New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut. Now for the for the areas near the coast, a lot is going to depend on that marine layer, which got in last night, and to some degree, it should get out of it today. It's it's uh, it, it depends. We, if we get that wind to go to the southwest, that probably will allow thunderstorms to hold together a bit longer as they approach the uh, coastline. So let's uh, jump over to the uh, HRRR model because I think this really pretty much sums up very well what I think is going to happen. So we get this first area that moves on through this morning. Now, sometimes what happens is when we have situations like this where there's a, a sort of a lead burst that runs out ahead of where the main line is, it, it basically winds up stabilizing the atmosphere. The atmosphere is in the process of getting all juiced up, and uh, so some little stray area of energy comes along and, and basically uses it, a lot of that up so that when the main line comes later in the day, it has less to work on. I'm not sure with this if this is how this is going to play because it looks like that first area weakens as we move into the lunchtime hour. And there you can see uh, the reformation of a second line here across uh, east central Pennsylvania uh, down uh, into northwestern Virginia through West Virginia. And then that pushes along to the east. It's not the most impressive looking line on the HRRR uh, model, but. You know, sometimes the model doesn't have a really good feel for these very, very small scale events. But I think the takeaway for me is that it does show a line of storms uh, coming through about uh, 2 to 3 o'clock in western New Jersey, 3 or 4 o'clock at the coast, and then uh, out to the east over Long Island by about 5 o'clock. And then it extends southward uh, into southern New Jersey, uh, Delaware. Uh, just south of the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area at this point, it will have already have gone through, and then uh, continuing um, south and east, south and west of there. There's another little line in western Pennsylvania that looks to be with the actual cold front, which is back through here, uh, and that moves on through. Uh, and, and as it moves eastward, by the way, it, that second line kind of falls apart. Uh, you do have a little bit of 
uh, leftover energy going on uh, across uh, New Jersey uh, as we go into uh, 1 a.m. So this is the actual weather front and some enhancement of, uh, of uh, shower activity right along the coast. So we'll see how that plays. The other issue now is going to be, uh, believe it or not, it's going to be snow on uh, Friday. And we're going to see how uh, the models are handling this. Um, before we do that, I just want to take a look. We have enough of the new NAM to get at least an idea of how it handles uh, the severe weather today. So here's that first area uh, that moves through, which the NAM really weakens. And then it doesn't really show too much uh, with regards to any squall line later today. It really actually shows more with the uh, development as the main cold front comes through. But by then, the severe weather threat will be done. Uh, but I think the HRRR has a much better feel for this than the other mod than uh, the NAM does. So I, I want to just backtrack here with regards to um, Friday because we have this low coming down in from the Great Lakes. It's a very tight little system here. Uh, and the NAM and the GFS now are in, in, in close agreement. Uh, low moves off the central New Jersey coast, passes along the south shore of Long Island, get a narrow band of, uh, of, of snow and possibly accumulating snow with that. I think this would be on the order of a coating to maybe a couple of inches. Uh, I'll show you on the GFS run from last night, pretty much the same idea. Uh, you've got this low uh, that moves a, a, a little fur further south, actually, than the, the NAM has it across northern Maryland and then off the New Jersey coast and done. And I'll show you the snow uh, forecast from the, um, the GFS. And again, these are, this is a minor event. It's got basically a one to three inch snowfall from central New Jersey on northward into the lower Hudson Valley and across Long Island and southern Connecticut. Also some uh, couple of inch snows, maybe a little bit more back through uh, Pennsylvania. This is going to be a very narrow band of snow. And the other issue is it's, that's important here is it falls during the daytime. We're in early March. Temperatures are actually going to probably fall, I believe, below freezing. But the sun angle is going to probably keep roads wet. So at, at worst, we're talking here is perhaps an accumulation on uh, grassy surfaces. The NAM was a little more aggressive uh, with this last night. So we'll take a look at that. And let me go back. Whoops. So this was, by the way, this was the NAM last night at um, yesterday evening, where everything was, again, north of the coast. But uh, now, because it's been the furthest north of all the models. And then when we go to last night's, it started dropping things a little further south. Actually, has a couple of three little, the little pinkish areas there over parts of Long Island scattered about. You know, this is the kind of thing where it's a coating to a couple of inches. It's not a big deal. It's going to be on the grass and even bigger, not a big deal. One of the things that, that uh, may happen, though, just this, is, this will come to end, to an end uh, during the mid to late afternoon Friday. Temperatures Friday night and Saturday morning, we're going to be dropping down into the teens. So anything, even the wet roads are going to ice up here. So just be, be aware of that. And then we're going to have a very cold weekend into um, the start of next week uh, as another big storm is going to be heading up toward the um, Great Lakes. And we're going to, the volatility is just amazing to me. So let me just punch, punch that up for you. And um, there we go. Busy with a lot of short range weather doesn't allow for me to look too much at the long range. I'm going to go back to the GFS and we'll take a look at this because believe it or not, this is all going to happen again. So here's that <clears throat> that little low that goes out, big high and cold air come into the northeast of mid-Atlantic and then that gives way. And here comes another uh, storm heading for the Great Lakes, uh, the, North, the Great Lakes with another strong cold front and I think probably another run for 60s in severe weather along about uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday, followed by another shot of cold air and maybe even another little wave diver later next week. I mean, that seems to be the pattern we're in. So this volatility is really at extremes here where we go from, we're going to go from 70 to teens uh, to accumulating from 70s in severe weather to accumulating uh, a small accumulating snow event to um, temperatures in the teens Saturday morning and in many areas not out of the 20s back up toward maybe 60s to near 70 Tuesday and Wednesday of next week with the next cold front, only to go back down again behind it with maybe another little snow threat. So 
that's where we are here in this uh, crazy new month that we have just started today. So we'll keep you posted on the severe weather developments uh, on the, the website, meteorologistjochaffee.com. I have some posts on that, and I also have some posts uh, regarding uh, snowfall for Friday. Um, and also, um, you, the uh, app will give you updates on the severe weather and the uh, possible snow for Friday as well. Uh, the links for both will come up uh, at the top here, and you can uh, click on those. Uh, the, the app uh, download is free. There's, there's forecast subscriptions, uh, 99 cents a month, uh, cheaper than a cup of coffee. So enjoy. All right. If you've uh, like the been, you're, if you're here this long on my YouTube video, uh, I'm glad you're uh, still with me. Uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free, and, and you'll get notifications every time new videos go up. And um, of course, if you are a regular on my YouTube channel, welcome back. Uh, enjoy having you here, and feel free to leave any comments. I'll try to post some links up during the day in the comments section for you to take a look at uh, in addition to what's up on the video. All right, so be safe in the severe weather. Pay attention to the National Weather Service, your local office, regarding uh, severe weather watches and warnings that, that go up uh, later today, and uh, pay attention to them. Uh, they could be life-saving. And we will talk to you. Uh, we, I may have another video up a little later this morning if I have an opportunity.